everyone. So in this episode, I wanted to show you a technique that is really easy to do here in Photoshop. This is a technique that I like to use to reduce a busy background and to give an image a painted look. So you can see this was my finished image. I may still add some texture to it, but for right now, this is my stopping point on this image. I have another image that we'll work through, but I thought we'd start with this one today. So often when you have an image like this, I just loved this iris, but the background, the other irises were not very pretty. And to me, it's just very distracting. And there are so many ways that you can deal with an image like this. You could remove, isolate the subject, remove the background and add one. You could do some blurring. You could do some cloning, just lots of different options. But I'm going to show you today the step that I took to deal with this situation. So this is the image where I was. So let's go ahead. And the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate this background layer. Now, what I want to do is isolate my subject because I don't want to do anything to this gorgeous iris. So I'm going to first go up to select and I'm going to do select subject. Now, Photoshop Shop does a really nice job with selecting subject and you can see it selected this entire iris and did a really beautiful job. Now, there's a little tip here that's missing. So I could grab the quick selection tool on the plus brush and I could come in and just increase that just a little bit to be sure that I get all of that great part of the flower. There we go. Otherwise, I think it did an excellent job. Now, what I'm going to do is do select and then inverse. So this is a trick that I love to do so that I can work on the background and not disrupt my subject. So click inverse. You'll see the marching ants go around your image and that lets you know that your selection is protected. You are now going to be able to work on the background area. All right, so I'm going to leave this all selected and I'm going to just continue to work on this layer. So the next thing that I'm going to do is go to filter blur and I'm going to do a Gaussian blur first. Now this is going to just blur those irises, get them kind of out of my way, taking the blur up pretty high. And you can see it's blurring around my subject in a really beautiful artistic way, but it's not impacting the actual subject. So I'm going to click OK. And that is the first step that I'm taking with this image. Now what I want to do is go ahead and I want to add a little bit of maybe do some painting on it. So I'm going to get the, you can see I still have my selection working. I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool and first I'm going to select this kind of light green color and I'm going to go to brush. I'm going to start with a really large brush and I'm just going to brush in some of this green. I've got a very low opacity and I'm just going to go over it kind of soften it. I really want this to have a really ethereal soft look. So I'm just going in, I'm going to raise the opacity now just a little bit where this kind of dark spot is. Now I want to add some of this purple color. So I'm going to come over and select that color, go back to my brush and I'm going to take the opacity down again to about 20%. I'm just going to pop in really soft some of that iris color brush it throughout, just weaving some of that in the image to help blend it. I'm really, I like to call this creating my own texture. So I'm just, just creating almost like really like you're painting. So I'm just coming in with that. All right. So now that we've got this pretty distorted and I like the way it's headed, the next thing I'm going to do is go to filter blur and I'm going to apply a motion blur. And for the motion blur, I'm going to angle it. So it's almost creating that shadow effect behind my iris. You can see how it's blurring it. Now we can do the distance. We can make it, you know, smaller kind of in the middle there. It's just giving it that ethereal painter look. And then I'm going to click OK. Now I want to take a look at the image and see how it's doing. So I'm going to do command or control D to get rid of the marching ants. And now I can see what a beautiful difference 
from before to after. I really love this softness. Now, if I wanted to continue working on this image, I'm going to duplicate that layer and I may want to go up to filter, stylize, maybe add an oil paint. Now, when I add oil paint, I like to keep all of the brush over here at the right and I keep the lighting all the way to the left. I find this gives a really natural, subtle oil paint look. So it's very, very subtle. If I turn it off and on, you'll just notice it in the water drops and in the background. So at that point, I think I'm pretty happy with this image. I really, really like the difference that it made to paint and blur and soften that background. It looks like I shot the image with maybe a really long lens, which would have compressed the background. All right, so let's look at another example where I have a very distracting background. And I think I have a copy of this image. So this is an image that I almost threw away. I really liked the composition and I love the flower, but I had just this blob down here. Now there are several ways that I could deal with this. I could try to use the clone tool. I could also do a selection on this area. But again, one of the easiest ways is to use a paintbrush. So what I'm gonna do is select a color and I wanna select this lighter kind of brown color and maybe even come up here. And then I'm gonna to go to my brush. I'm gonna start with the opacity up a little bit higher because we have to cover this orange. And I'm just gonna start brushing in. I'm gonna make the brush smaller and come in and just clean that up. Let me zoom in so you can see. I'm just gonna get as close as I can. And I'm gonna show you a trick to this stem too in just a second. So I'm gonna come in again, just brush around there. Now with the brush at a lower opacity, you can go over it multiple times. Just really gonna kind of smooth that out. Now, what I wanna do is blend this with the rest of the image. So I'm gonna take the opacity down really low and I'm just gonna come over the stem, give it just a little bit, and then I'm gonna start kind of feathering this out. Let's take the opacity up. This is where I just start playing. And I just start kind of popping it around this lighter color, just kind of blending it in so that it matches. I wanna add some of that up here to just have that consistent background. Go over this a couple times. I find that working with a low opacity, just like if you were painting, I can go over it multiple times, which really helps to get the color where you want versus using a heavier, a heavier handed brush. Just kind of coming around and brushing all of that to give it a nice soft look. So now that we've dealt with this background, you can see before and after, it's really soft. I've worked with the paint, and now I can come in and decide what else I want to do with this image. And this is an option where I could decide to maybe play with the background color and change it. I could apply a texture to the image. I could apply oil paint. I could take it into Topaz and do some fun things. And the options are really endless. But the critical piece was to get rid of that blob. Now, again, you guys, there are lots of ways to do this. I just wanted to show you today in this short video how I use the brush tool as well as the blur tool to make an impact in images that have a really distracting background. So think about using Photoshop. Think about making your selections and using blur, using the paintbrush to really give you that beautiful, soft look that you may want in your images. Thanks so much, everybody. Be sure to click like and subscribe and leave me any comments. I'm always looking for video recommendations, so send me those anytime. Thanks so much.